Can Peter Jackson reclaim his former glory without tarnishing his precious? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. I like visitors as much as the next Hobbit. But I do like to know them before they come. Visiting. Mr. Baggins? At your service. Hmm? I'm surrounded by dwarves. What are they doing here? Oh, they're quite a merry gathering. You asked me to find the 14th member of this company, and I have chosen Mr. Baggins. Me? No, no, no. He seize this chance to take back Erebor. Yeah. Here, Mr. Bilbo, where are you off to? I'm going on an adventure. When you make a trilogy that grosses almost $3 billion at the worldwide box office and takes home the first Best Picture Oscar ever for the fantasy genre, most would be tempted to just step back and safely bask in the glow of such success. However, much like Disney and Pixar are not content to walk away from their Toy Story franchise, Peter Jackson is unwilling to move on from the Lord of the Rings franchise. Yes, that's right, it's a franchise now. But perhaps Jackson is unwilling to move on because he's already tried that. In fact, he's circling back to the Lord of the Rings after first faltering with his King Kong remake and then falling down completely with the lovely bones in Tintin. So when the long battle over the film rights to The Hobbit was finally settled, resolved by New Line and MGM agreeing to partner on the film, Jackson moved ahead but with plans for Guillermo del Toro to helm the pick and he produce. But due to extensive delays, two years after signing on, del Toro quit the pick in 2010. So Jackson stepped in, but this would be far from the last problem for the film. First, there was the labor strike in New Zealand, but when Warner Brothers threatened to move production elsewhere, the New Zealand government actually stepped in and passed laws that made it illegal for workers in their film industry to form trade unions. Wow, that seems horrible, but there's more. It was then announced that The Hobbit would be three films instead of two, a decision met with much controversy. In fact, one film critic noted that while The Lord of the Rings books were over a thousand pages, The Hobbit comes in at less than 300 pages. Yet both result in nine-hour trilogies? Next, people who saw advanced screenings of the 48 frames per second prints, a new technology that Jackson is pushing, complain the picture was so clear that it made them feel sick. And then recently, PETA asked the New Zealand government to investigate the onset deaths of 27 animals. Good luck with that. Did you see what they already did to human trade unions? But perhaps most damaging of all is that while all three Lord of the Rings movies rocked near perfect Rotten Tomato scores, so far The Hobbit is just at 75%. What's more, the overall buzz is that the film is simply too long and caving in under its own grandeur. But Jackson has one last hope, the fans. Will they keep him from fully tarnishing one of the greatest trilogies? No, no, I'm sorry, that's right, franchises of all time? Let's go find out. Yeah. So you paid to see it today in not only 3D, but the high frame rate. Yes, of course. This is a movie you have to see in uh... Well, did you notice a difference? Of course. Definitely, yes. Yeah? So it's, some people are saying 48 frames makes them feel a little sick. Um, no, it just no. makes it more real. Yes. Really? I think it solved the problem. The biggest problem I had with Lord of the Rings was that no matter how many times I watched it, in, including part, frame by frame, almost frame by frame on, on, by, on computer, yeah. I couldn't see a lot of the action, the, the really deep action scenes. And this time, either he's slowed down the action scenes enough or, he, or the 48 frames a minute was enough to, or 40 to 48 frames a second, yeah. was enough to make it visually accessible. What's actually weird is when you see it in such a high definition, we were kind of talking about that. Initially, it seems like you're almost, it's too well defined that you see it like almost like it's a set. Oh, really? So in a sense, it's, it's maybe a bit too much. Uh, but then I guess our eyes adapted to it, so we saw it, away. and it looked it looked a lot better after a while. I think they're going to have to find a lot of uh, use a lot of new techniques to uh, to get it to feel as artfully realized as a, uh, you know the sort of flowing 24 frames per second oh. type film. Would you want to see more films in 48 frames per second? Definitely, yes. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking as I was I was watching the movie. This is what the future is holding for the film industry, yes, I can wait for it. Really? Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. You didn't pay to see it in 3D or extra, fr uh, you know, the 48 frames per second. Do you feel that that, you know, detracted from your movie experience? No, not really. No. No, I didn't. Um, oh. Because the thing is, like, there's some movies where I just don't feel like I need to watch it in 3D because, you know, like, half of the movies I see, like, my eyes get strained. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just sit back and re enjoy watching the movie. Oh, that's great. It seemed like it was more about the technology and less about the story. Would you say that this is the same quality as the original trilogy? Uh, just 
Yes, it is. It's good as Lord of the Rings. I mean, it has a different feel to it. It has more of a family feel to it. It's like in the book also, because there's a difference between The Hobbit and The Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings uh, trilogy. I wish that three first one were 3D. This was unbelievable. It was better than Lord of the Rings? Definitely. Well, what makes it better? It's just the effects, the, the sounds. I mean, we're talking about, it, it's been, how long, like five years ago? Ten, almost ten years. Technology yeah. has got much better. Has it made so. that much of a difference? Oh, yes. Oh, totally. wow. Were you a fan of the Lord of the Rings trilogy? The books? The, no, the original movies. How do you like that? Look, it's, it's, it's hard to disparage uh, so many people putting so much effort into something. True. So the style of it, I thought, was kind of bland. But, uh, yeah, there were some wonderful things in it. And well, I really liked Gollum in that oh. one and this one, of course. I think we both really like Gollum. He's, he's still the best. Hilarious. Oh, he's yeah. still the yeah. best. Is there a lot of Gollum? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's quite a bit of Gollum, and, and oh, he's good. just really funny. And he has everyone seems to be singing like throughout the whole movie. <laughs> it's so pretty they, much a musical. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Eat your heart out, lame is. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, I started off really lucky feely. But by the end, it was like, I was a little questionable about Martin Freeman from all the yeah. promo stuff. Uh -huh. It's like, I just couldn't get into it. But I have to say, by the end of the movie, he's totally into character. Oh, really? Yeah. The bold dwarf. Oh, one of the, oh, you liked the dwarves? Yes, of course. Oh, good. Yeah. Was, maybe, was that Dwalin, it. the guy with the axes? Uh, the dwarf, yeah, the one like? with the axes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's yeah. great. I'd have to say Thorin. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. What did you think of the dwarves? Because there's 13 of them. You know, I would think it might be hard for some of them to stand out. Well, actually, you know, thanks to you, I was able to figure out who's who. You oh. know, when I saw that review video Oh, you know, the, you yeah, Know Your Dwarves, right? Yeah. yeah so I, was that helpful? Oh, yeah. Even like, oh, wrote, like a, I even wrote it down just in case if I forgot. Oh, that's perfect. He has a cheat sheet. Some critics have said it's too long. What do you say? I think it was great. I actually was expecting for more. Oh, really? Yes. I'm a Lord of the Ring fan, so oh, yeah? I totally enjoy it. The ending was sort of abrupt. That was yeah. kind of looking for more closure, but yeah. but it was very exciting. I mean, it was the shortest three hours ever. <laughs> no, it didn't feel that long to me. Oh, like, good. Uh, but I think the best part was all the humor, because uh, I think that's what, you know, the fact that it kept me laughing throughout the entire movie, that it felt more fun. And when you're having fun with something, you know, you don't really care about the time. Too much story. The Hobbit's a beautiful, simple book. Mm -hmm. It's got a, it's a fairy tale. It's not this, it's, it's not this big, ugly epic with all this backstory and stuff. It came before all that and it doesn't didn't have any quaintness. Except that you have to realize there's another 100, 150 pages of appendices which he had the right to, to uh, film and ah. which he's going to sneak in. Oh. And if not all 150 pages, but a good 75 or so. So what would you say to that reluctant moviegoer who sees the not so great reviews, doesn't know if they want to pay the extra money for the 3D, doesn't want to go stand on a long line. What do you say to that person? Well, if they're a fan of Lord of the Rings, they will enjoy The Hobbit. What if they're not? What if someone was never really into Lord of the Rings? Well, that's, that's their choice. <laughs> that's great. We can't even fathom that. I thought it was a good movie and going to be a great, uh, I don't know if it's a sequel, trilogy? Trilogy. Trilogy, okay. Are you in for the whole thing? Of course. I'll definitely continue to see the movies, mm -hmm. and I, I think that they're always great, really entertaining, and. I was really looking forward to this, and it's everything you know lived up to my. Oh really? My, oh, that's great. Uh, Since you didn't love this so much, will you see the other two films? There's two more to go. Um, I I, uh, I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you know you don't want to miss the event. It's it's a component of a lot of things that you really have to take the time to sit down, watch it, and appreciate everything. So, what do you give this this film on a one to ten? I give it a, I give it a nine out of ten. I think ten. Ten? Yeah. Well, how about you? Yeah, a good nine ten. I definitely will give it a nine. One to ten. Three. Oh, fifty. I can give it a ten because I love the movie, but it depends. I have to see everything. I had a lot of fun watching it. I didn't feel bored, so for me, that's 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 good enough for a ten. So while Peter Jackson might have missed the mark with critics, he's clearly on target with audiences who overall enjoy the film. Have you seen The Hobbit: An Unexpected Journey? Be sure to share your own thoughts down below, as well as vote and be on the trailers poll for the top ten movies of 2012. Go to tinyurl.com/bttvote2012 now through January 3rd. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from Regal Ewok, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.